Um, and if it doesn't, you shouldn't do it, right? So assuming that it's coming from your heart, it's your baby, it's the thing you want to get out there. Just by the sheer fact of doing... Hey guys, Will Terry here, and this video is going to be called I Just Finished Art School and How Do I Get Illustration Work? I keep making videos sort of like this, but the reason that I'm going to keep doing this is because I keep getting asked the question, but I'm going to... I, each time I think I'm going to try to attack it in a little bit different way. So this is this will definitely have new material in it. Um, <clears throat> but before I get going on that, um, I just wanted to say, hey, I really appreciate the amazing comments that I get on a lot of the videos. And the, the one that I did um, a few weeks ago uh, about, what was that one about? Um, oh, yeah, my sad illustration rep story. Um it seemed like a lot of people really cared about that. And the thing is, um, I like, like I said in the video, I like hearing stories. And I thought it would be an, um, an interesting story um, to, to maybe some of you because maybe you will you will experience something like that or have experienced something like that. My dog is licking me right now. Um, anyway, um, just thank you for the engagement. I don't get to reply to all of your comments, but I do read most of them. I mean, I read, let me, let me say that in the first week or two, I read all of them. And then as the video gets older, I don't. So like there's, I know there's a lot of videos that people are finding that I did last year and the year before. And usually I never get to read the new comments on those, even though I still appreciate it. It's just that every, right now that I've have over a hundred videos, there's no possible way that I can, uh, you know, spend all day reading the, the, the comments, even though they're great comments and every now and then. I will get a notification or something and I'll, I'll check it out. Um, okay. So, um, another thing that I wanted to talk about before I get going on this idea here is that sometimes like between the last video and this one, there's like a gap of maybe I didn't count exactly 10 or 11 days or something. And I, my goal is to do a weekly video, but sometimes I don't get to do a weekly video simply because I'm too busy with work, work and other things happening and family and just, just life things happening. Um, but then at other times, uh, the video that I want to do, I know is going to take a little bit of time to, to prepare for. And one thing that I am definitely not down for is like hitting a goal of getting a, a video out every week and then doing a substandard job just because, just to get it out there, just to keep the channel going. Um, I have heard that on YouTube, uh, they reward you if you upload more than once a week. And to me, that's just, I, I can't devote that kind of time. So rather than throw out something just to get another video out there, I personally, I, I follow channels where I feel like they post way too many videos. And eventually what happens is I stop watching the channel because I feel like, well, I've seen that video before or there just wasn't anything that important in it. Um, and I know that that happens with some of mine too. Uh, I know that, you know, because I, I talk about a lot of the similar stuff that eventually people are probably going to tune out after a while, but I really do try to, to hit something that I feel is important that I feel like we'll maybe have some, we'll actually be able to help people. And so that's, that's what I'm going for. Um, I did want to mention since this is kind of a business related, um, you know, how to get work and stuff. This is a shameless plug that you guys have heard before for our uh, svslearn.com site. Um, Lee White just uploaded a business class, which I think is awesome. And if you know who Lee White is, if you don't know who he is, you should check out his work. The guy is an insane businessman. He makes way more money than I do in illustration. Um, and I am impressed at his work ethic, in his tenacity, and in his ability to sell art. Um, he makes a lot of money. I can't, I won't, you know, divulge, but I mean, like he, it would, it would shock you how much he makes with his illustration business. And one of the reasons is he can sell his, he creates, uh, and I don't think he'll mind me saying this. He creates a, a lot of his illustrations digitally, his watercolors, he'll create them digitally, and then he'll recreate them, um, the original from that painting. If the painting for the, for the illustration looks good, and then he'll sell that original 
And I know he's taught that in his uh, college classes before. Um, and he even mentioned that he's surprised that people, more people don't do that because he is able to get quite a bit of money for his originals. So anyway, um, and I might just add with that, I don't think that he's making a lot of money with his originals because of his name, because I think in the gallery world, he's not as well established. I think that people really just, he's in the right place, the right shows. He does, um, these outdoor shows. Uh, in the Portland area and Seattle area and people just love his his work and they want an original and they're willing to pay for it um, anyway that's a that's kind of a side note so um, on to the video so I get I I keep getting asked this the same question and, and as um, the one of the reasons why I wanted to make this now is because we're kind of for a lot of people are in their their last semester there's the second semester before school ends for the summer and I know a lot of seniors are going to be thinking along these lines and I I usually start to get asked this but in the last uh two weeks I think I've been asked this three different times from three different people is basically I just finished school or I'm getting ready to finish school um who should I meet is one question I get like who are the people that I should meet like who should I try to physically go get to meet I just finished school where do I advertise my work? How do I get freelance work? Um, what? How do I get going? How do I get this this thing going? And they're great questions. Um, the answers are usually not that satisfying. Probably the reason is, you know, like if if you were asking the question, like, "Hey, I want to flip burgers. Where do I get a job?" I would say, "Go down to the Golden Arches down there, and they will." put you to work because they're always looking because it's such a crappy place to work. And by the way, I worked at McDonald's for two years. I put in my time. I, I slugged it out. Um, and I worked at pizza hut making pizzas and that's a boy, that's another story. Um, but anyway, if it was, if that's what you were asking, that would be easy. Why is it harder, um, for illustration? Well, primarily because, uh, one, in-house illustration jobs are very few and far between. They're nowhere near um, as many as there would be at burger flipping jobs. Um, but the other reason I think is because uh, because in the freelance world, there's opportunities constantly opening and shutting and opening and shutting and people moving around and like some place that you, you know, you might have gotten a freelance job with with someone, you know, six months ago and then i i you know i tell you oh well you should go and, and send them something or try to get a hold of this person and then they've moved on to another job and art directors and editors they move around all the time so that's a really tough thing to keep a hold keep track of but even beyond that if i did send you there and said oh this person hires me or hires my friend to do illustration work um, it's not, we're not interchangeable, uh, like a burger flipper, you know, like you, you flip burgers at one McDonald's, you can flip it at any McDonald's. You work at Burger King, you can work at any Burger King or McDonald's or, uh, five guys or whatever. Um, because it's a low skilled job. And the thing is, I can't, um, I couldn't direct you and say, well, you need to talk to this person or that person pr primarily because, what they're looking for at the time is so specific that um, not just any illustrator will do with any skills. And I, interestingly, you know, back in the day, art directors used to make more time to uh, see illustrators. And it used to be very common, at least when I was going through school, the advice was go to New York or go to LA and show your portfolio around. Well, when I finished, I started in the Washington DC area because that's where I grew up. Excuse me. And, uh, when I got back there and that was in 92, nobody wanted to see me. Nobody wanted to, uh, I'd bring my portfolio in and, and I couldn't even get to see the art director there, you know, in a cubicle or in another room or another floor somewhere. And I, I couldn't even get in to see him and I would have to drop off my portfolio. Um, there were art directors that would make time. It was very, very rare. I never found anybody. In fact, one time I lied, uh, when I was 
really frustrated with the process and I couldn't get in to see anybody. I went into the Washington Post and the security guard at the, at the bottom said, oh, who's your appointment with? And I knew the art director that I was trying to, to see. Her name was Carol Porter. And, uh, and so I just said, Carol Porter. And he goes, oh, there's the elevator going up. So as I'm in the elevator, I'm like, uh-oh, what do, I, what do I say to this woman who doesn't have a clue that I'm even coming by to drop off my portfolio? And so when, luckily when she came, he said, I'll have her meet you. So he had called ahead. And as I'm getting off the elevator, she's coming from her desk from the newsroom, this big, huge, vast newsroom area. And she's shaking her head like, I, I am so sorry. Did we have an appointment? And I kind of just sheepishly said, uh, well, the security guard just told me to come up. And she she went, oh, okay. So she kind of put two and two together. And she goes, okay, that's sneaky. Well, since you're here, why don't you meet everybody? And she took me through the whole um, art department. And I got to meet six different editors. And interestingly enough, I ended up working for her probably about 30 times. I did 30 different assignments for the Washington Post. Um, and that was just a luck thing. But that was part of you know being out there and trying and doing. And that's going to be kind of a theme that I think is going to run through this video um, a little bit. But anyway, um, moving on, you know, it's really hard to go and actually uh, so the, so for the question of the person who's asking you know who do I go meet there nowadays there really isn't anybody that you can just go and meet and primarily they have less time than they ever did a lot of art directors um, be, be, I, and I, th I really feel like this is because we went through the 2008 recession and during that time publishing just took a devastating hit um, I could tell you stories but this video would be an hour long some people are probably saying, oh, keep talking. Um, but um, I've, I've talked with, uh, you know, who a, a woman who used to be the uh, the creative director for HarperCollins. She told me, oh, my gosh, it, we, we got devastated. This was right after 2008. I believe it was in 2009. She says, uh, she says there's so many layoffs. And I think when publishing came back, because now it's really kind of thriving again, um, but I think when it came back, you know, I don't think that that all the publishers were like, well, let's just hire all those positions back because during that time, art directors were doing the work of two art directors and editors were doing the work of two editors. And so, yeah, maybe they've hired a few, some back, but I don't think they've hired them all. Anyway, I think that these people are just beat up and they have less time than they ever have. And they're never going to make time. I shouldn't say never because I hate absolutes they almost assuredly won't make the time for you to go in and show your portfolio. Sometimes you can drop it off and sometimes they have policies um, where you can leave samples and things like that for art directors. But that is such an expensive way to market yourself. I mean, think about it. Unless you live in New York City um, really close to the publishers, that's a waste of time. And even if you did live there, I, there's a lot of things I could think of you doing, spending your time that would actually um, have much more um, a high, a much more, a better ratio on time to effort, right? So um, I want to introduce you to an art director named Giuseppe Castellano, and you can reach him. I don't think he'll mind this because he really puts himself out there. Um, on Twitter at Pino Castellano and I will link it below so it's in the description down there um, but he is an art director that just really has put himself out there in a great way for artists and um, he is willing to answer any of your questions on Twitter and I think I, I don't know of another art director that's that's being that open um, with their time and that um, giving and I just think that's an awesome thing because that's so rare in this industry. Um, so the other thing is I presented with him a few weeks ago with Jake Parker um, at the Utah-Idaho SCBWI conference um, in Salt Lake and got to meet him in person. And I had been following him on Twitter for quite a while um, and, and checking out and seeing what he was doing. Um, and... Uh, just a super guy, just a really nice guy, 
super um, available, super helpful. And one of the things that he said when he was at the conference that I, I've already known, I've known this, but I've never he- quite heard somebody just lay it out there like he did. And he just said, look, as art directors, we are always looking for new artists. We're always looking for new work. We're looking, at, we're looking at it from everywhere. Um, and people started asking, well, where do you look, you know? And the things that he said, <clears throat> excuse me, are um, one of the one of the big ones is postcards. And postcards have been around forever. If you haven't heard about using postcards, then let's just go through it right now. I could I could. Sp- I could fill two hours just talking about postcards, just so you know. Um, now I am going to, I'm going to to plug it again. <coughs> uh, I did create with Jake Parker. We created a children's book class, um, which you know you could take the information and, and and call it a publishing class because it doesn't just you know if you want to do young adult or fantasy or or graphic novels, it's all the information still applies. Um, and, but the thing is I spent, um, five months doing nothing. This was, um, about two years ago, I spent five months doing nothing but writing this class. And I took the class from my college class, uh, this children's book class, but I went through everything and at, and filled in all the gaps and it took five months of writing. I spent the whole summer doing it. Um, and into September and, and, and October. Um, and this was again, this was in 2013. Let's see. No, 14. And, um, anyway, as far as I know, I'm going to say this until someone tells me different, but I think it's the most comprehensive children's book class online. I haven't seen another one. Um, it's got a 200 page PDF manual and half of that is just dedicated to the business side. Um, and it, I go in detail on postcards and things like that. So all that information is packed in there. But anyway, back to postcards. And there, I'll link it below. It's at svslearn.com. Um, but, uh, you know, he's telling everybody, look, we, you know, if you send me a postcard, I'm going to see it. It's addressed to me. Um, it has to get to me. Um, they, they deliver it to my desk as I go through my mail. There it is. It pops up. And one of the things that people ask me is, well, should I advertise on a portfolio site? And I'm not going to name them because I don't want, you know, I don't want that kind of drama, you know, by saying a portfolio site doesn't work. Um, the, the problem, and I, I think I've mentioned this before, a portfolio site is, is a site where you pay a fee to have your images listed on their site. And their site uh, will do some advertising for the entire site. And then hopefully, you know, art directors and editors go there and then they see your work and then they hire you. Um, I put my work on a portfolio site for two years and this was probably about six or seven years ago just to, just to test it out. It was only 300 bucks for the year. Um, and I got one job offer that I turned down because it was really low paying. And um, I, I kind of felt that way going in and one of the reasons why it, why they don't work is they're kind of a dead zone site right so what happens is everybody puts their portfolio up there and then that portfolio will kind of stagnate uh, over the year and most people not all but most people never update it they're like ah oh, I got all my images on the site it's there it's working for me and they don't do anything well you have to always reverse engineer uh, a piece of your marketing, you've got to get into the head of the user. If I'm an art director and I go to a portfolio site and I go and I start cruising through it and I see everything there is to see, I, I'm just clicking through names really fast, you know, thumbnails of people that look, and you can look at thumbnails a lot of times. You can say that person looks really amateurish, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to avoid that one. But you go through the ones that catch your eye and pretty soon you've gone through the site. Now, the second time you go back, if everything's basically the same, which it is, then you're you are not going to go back a third time because you already can predict what's going to happen. The difference between that and Instagram, an art director cruising Instagram, is they're going to see new stuff every single day. They go on Facebook, they're going to see new stuff every single day. They go on Twitter, they're going to see new stuff every day. 
So as art directors, they pretty much avoid those sites because they're what I call dead sites. You put your information there and it just just kind of stagnates. Um, it is the logical answer for many artists because it just makes sense. Oh, I can just pay some money and then I get to put all my stuff where an art director is going to go. It makes sense. It doesn't work. Um, if you disagree, I mean, the thing is, there are people that get work from those sites. So I'm not saying that you will never get any work and that nobody ever gets any work. Um, but there are, you know, it's like, it's like in Top Gun when Tom Cruise says this is a target rich environment. Those portfolio sites are not target rich environments. Okay. Um, there are many other places where they can go. They can go to certain rep sites. Um, some of the bigger rep sites that have, that do turn over their work a lot more than those portfolio sites. Um, and have a higher caliber so you don't have to wade through you know on those portfolio sites anybody can put their stuff there um, and because anybody can put their stuff there there's going to be a lot of lower end um, beginner work that if you're an art director again you don't want to sift through the lower stuff and so if I was an art director I'd go to a go to a rep I'd cruise social media I'd check my mail my physical mail for postcards and things like that um so there's that. I also go to conferences and check out portfolios there. So anyway, check out uh, Giuseppe Castellano. Um, he's awesome. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is um, probably the answer to this question, but I'm going to go I'm going to go into depth again after this. But the sh the the basic answer and I've given this answer before to someone who says, "What do I do?" I, you know, I just finished school and now what? And before I, before I, I tell you that, just know this, that you've, you've got to know this as a, as a student leaving school, you've worked really hard to get your portfolio um, up to here. Okay. Now, if you talk to anybody who has been working for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25, 30, what you're going to find is they don't use any of the work they did in school so that has all been left behind for me the the work that i'm showing in my portfolio is pretty much from the last five years um some a few pieces maybe from 10 years ago but beyond that no i don't i don't i don't use that that work anymore um and i've been doing it for 22 23 years somewhere in there and uh and so your portfolio if you're serious your portfolio is constantly going to be turning over and getting better and you're gonna be kicking out the stuff so right now you're you're thinking well my work is up here when in actuality unfortunately in reality it's actually down here now that's fine because there's work from there's there's all kinds of jobs the ones that are down here all the way up to here and different clients that are paying different amounts of money um, and are gonna have you know some some people won't hire the the upper level people uh, because they don't want to pay those fees. And so they're looking for people coming out of school all the time. Um, and, and so there's, there's just ranges. Um, but, um, so the, the thing, the thing that I'm just going to tell you, and I'm going to link this too. I want you to watch, this is like a homework assignment. Can you believe that you're getting homework from my channel? I want you to watch Neil Gaiman's, uh, commencement speech. If you haven't already seen that he's the author of Coraline and I think that he basically sums up the answer to this video in in his re relatively short commencement speech um, and basically his his uh, motto is make great art but you've got to watch him deliver it because it really makes a lot of sense um, make great art and the the, the, the thing about that is you know how do you how do I get illustration work? Well, if you're making great art, then the only thing stopping you is a few key people seeing your great art and going, "Oh, I've got to hire that person." So you know, Giuseppe Castellano, he sees work all the time. He's seeing new work. He's seeing new artists. He's seeing artwork uh, from old artists. He's seeing all kinds of art out there. And the other thing you have to keep in mind is they get very specific projects. They get, they get a story, and in their mind, they, as an art director, they start to get a, a vision of what that book needs art-wise. And 
because they're constantly dealing with new stories, they're constantly having different art needs. So just because he might see your work one week or one month and it doesn't look right for a project, but if he sees it another month or another month down the road or the next month, eventually there might be something that comes across his desk um, where he just goes, oh my gosh, this, this person's work is perfect. Um, and the, the, so that, that, that really means that your job is to make the best art that you can. Um, cause you got to understand too, for somebody like him, um, or any art director, they are afraid of you. They're afraid of me. They're afraid of, uh, they're afraid of artists. And you say, well, how can that be? Well, they're putting, so what they will do is they'll, they'll, they'll find an artist that they think is perfect, right? For a job because they love the look, right? But they're worried that you're not going to deliver what they've seen in your portfolio. They're worried that you're not going to be able to, to carry a character. There's, there's a million ways we can, as artists, we can screw their life up, right? We don't leave enough room for text. We, um, we don't illustrate the story. Um, we're, we're hard to work with when they ask us to make changes and then we're resistant to that. Um, uh, and again, there's a million other ways we can, we can, we can screw their life over. Um, but they, you have to understand when they pitch us for a job, they're putting their reputation on the line. They, they go in front of their art director or their editor and they say, um, I think so-and-so will be perfect for this job. And the editor's like, really? Really? It looks like they're just out of school. It looks like they're just starting out. And the art director will say, I just, and now they're getting nervous because they know they don't really know you. And th this happens behind the scenes a lot. You'll never know. Sometimes you're up for, for tons of different jobs and you'll never know about it. Maybe you'll hear about it sometime. I've heard about it from, from art directors before at a conference. Like, yeah, we pitched your work for a job one time and it never went through. I'm like, oh, you, you don't never know about it. Um, but just know that, that you, your job as an artist, uh, as an illustrator, is to make them uh, comfortable with your with your portfolio. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. And I'm I am going to say this that I am going to do a video that I already have planned. It might not be the next one, but it'll probably be the one after that, um, or it might be the next one, depending on a certain person if they get their act together and help me out with a video that we're planning to do but it's going to be called setting up your illustration portfolio. And I'm going to spend a lot of time kind of going over like what I feel like you need to do in order to be ready to attract someone like, you know, a, a Giuseppe Castellano. But just know that the, you're, you're already in the realm of making their life hell um, if you don't come through. And they've already put their life on the line um, and their reputation by even pitching you. So you, it's your responsibility to come through and, and you've got to, you've got to work really hard and getting your work to a certain level. You can't just expect to come out of school and have somebody stake their, stake their life on you like that. And so then you say, well, well, how in the world do I ever get into the business? And, and really where it comes from is you're going to have to start on lower level projects. You're going to have to, you, you know, it's a, I don't want this to sound derogatory, but you have to cut your teeth on the, the lower entry crappy projects you know and there's some artists out there who have youtube channels who have given advice and you'll see this happening a lot of times where they'll say you know never work for free never let yourself be taken advantage of and i say my answer to that is um evaluate every project on its own and again one of the reasons why i don't like absolutes is because Sometimes you, there are times where being taken advantage of can lead to great things. Most of the time, being taken advantage of is just exactly that. You, you were taken advantage of. But again, and I think I made another video uh, over a year ago about this. Um, I have tons of stories where I worked for a hundred bucks, totally got taken advantage of. And then the artwork then got me, you know, five other projects that paid really well because it, because it went in my portfolio and my, justification for that is you know coming up with assignments for your portfolio is kind of tough right um it's 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 hard to come up with something that really looks like a project that that looks like a legitimate illustration project on your own sometimes and sometimes you can do it 
um, and people will say, oh, what was that for? But most of the time, I, I think it looks like a kind of a contrived project. And so working for 100 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever the, the low amount is, free, you know, um, you know, you have to evaluate the project because sometimes you'll get that, that, that project that gives you an idea that you would have never done. And now it's in your portfolio and you, and you knocked it out of the park. You just did an amazing job. Um, and because of that, it's, it's going to get you other work. And that's happened so many times for me. One of my, my stipulations is if somebody asked me to do something for free or for a really low amount, <clears throat> what I would tell them is, um, I will do it, but you, you have to know that you're asking for a lot more. You're asking me to give you a lot more than you're giving me in return. So because of that, I want free reign on doing this assignment. And then I've gone as far as on some of them saying, okay, I'll do your project for 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, but I am the artist and the art director and you don't get to make changes. I'm going to make a piece of art. If you don't want to print it, that's fine, but I'm not changing it. Like I'm going to have a portfolio piece out of this. Do, or, do you accept those terms? And that's worked out really well for me. And sometimes people are like, you think, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, sometimes people will literally be out of touch enough to say, Oh no, there, I could never work under those terms. You, you know, this is our, this is our project. We've got to be able to make changes. And at that point, sometimes, sometimes you will just say, well, then go find somebody else. And you, you feel totally good about walking away from it. Other times the project will have that exposure word, which, you know, a lot of people say, you know, okay, well you can die of exposure too, but which is very true. But again, evaluate the project for what it is and just know that I, I think that you have to take advantage of the luck factor and you have to be able to um, do enough projects to where some of them will pay off. And, but if you, you know, the person who says, well, I'm never going to be taken advantage of is also that same person who's just never doing anything at all, you know, and luckily they're in their home in their parents' basement going, well, at least I'm not getting taken advantage of, you know, and then that's true, but you're also not putting yourself in the running for, for bigger and better things that are out there. So, you know, it, you, you have to evaluate it. Look at my video on how to price illustration. I really talk about that in more depth on, on when to take the, the lower paying jobs and when not to, um, I'll link that too if I can remember, but I don't have anything to write on, so hopefully I remember. Um, I'm just trying to make a mental note so I remember. Okay, so we talked about portfolio sites. I just want to talk about some other things. I was talking to my friend, my friend, my friend, uh, Jed Henry, the other night, and he's the guy that did the Yu Gi Oh Heroes. <laughs> so now I'm going to have to remember to link that too. I'm just going to write this down on something I think I'll pause the video okay so yeah my friend Jed Henry um, and we were talking the other night about this very thing because I was telling him I was gonna make this video and he said you know my advice to students is make projects um, and he said make projects not something else and I can't remember what the something else is but it's basically I think he said make projects not portfolios that's it make projects not portfolios so in other words and this kind of goes against like me even talking about like gearing up your portfolio even though I still think you should have a portfolio um, but his his advice is if you spend your time creating a project that then you ship in other words you you send it out into the world you kickstart it you pay for it on your own you um, sell it at a show you sell it at a gallery you do something um, with a project that by getting out there and doing that thing you will expose yourself to other people those other people will see what you're working on they'll get excited because it's passionate because it comes from your heart um, and if it doesn't you shouldn't do it right so assuming that it's coming from your heart it's your baby it's a thing you want to get out there just by the sheer fact of doing it will generate other leads and other prospects and other opportunities that you never would have gotten had you not done that project. I fully back that idea. It has happened so many times for me that I, I can't even begin to tell you. And this might be a good time to kind of jump into this, this next thing before I kind of go through this list here, which this is going to be a long one, I guess, after all. And that is that the longer you stay in this thing, 
okay this is key the longer you are a working artist and that means that doesn't mean that you're a working freelance artist it doesn't mean that you're you know you're getting a lot of client work but it means that you're somebody that's out there slugging it out in the trenches you're at the copy center you're at and by the way one time I was getting color copies made and I got a client this was when I was living back in DC when I was when I first started um, selling uh, my illustration work when I when I got out of college and I first started I was at Staples and I was getting color copies to send out as promos um, because this was before I even heard about doing postcards this was this was way back and this guy in line behind me he sees my art that's being copied he sees the the guy bring it up to me and he goes oh what's that for and I said oh these are promos that I'm sending out I'm an illustrator and he goes I'm an art director and I hire illustrators and I mean it was you, you I mean it was so serendipitous it was like it sounds so sappy um, but he worked for this he worked for a magazine called hospice magazine and if you know what a hospice is it is a place where people go to die when they're old and it's 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 like a hospital but it's set up for old people who are gonna die it's kind of morbid um, and there used to be a magazine called hospice magazine I work for that guy probably at, at least 20 times doing inside full pages and and um, spreads and covers I probably did the cover of hospice magazine like seven times um, and each time I did a cover it was like a thousand bucks um, and so that it was it was such an amazing contact to make because I was out there doing it um, and so I, I fully back that idea I think you should make projects not portfolios um, but I think you all should should make a portfolio so you're gonna have to just do double the work I guess um, but I just want to talk about um, things like like Kickstarter a lot of people I will hear people you know though if you say it's funny because if you say um, if, if someone says well, well what do I do to to launch my career if somebody mentions Kickstarter you know or someone will be on Facebook and they'll go if one more person tells me to go to Kickstarter I'm just going to shoot myself or, you know, or they'll laugh about it. And the, the, the thing is to think that you can just come up with a project, launch it on Kickstarter, have it earn 50 or a hundred thousand dollars, have you get millions of contacts from that and launch your, your art career is not probably not going to happen like that. I mean, they're, so they're right in that sense. But freak, man, you're doing something. You know, you're out there slugging it out, doing it. And I guarantee you that every project that you work on, you're gonna learn. You're you're learning from it. And that kind of education is the kind of education you can't buy in school. There's no possible way you can get that in school. And you have to get that kind of an education. Um, you have to learn by doing. You have to learn by failing. Unfortunately, if you're gonna be successful at this, failure is gonna be part of it. Failure is an option. It's not just an option, it's a necessity. Um, Okay, so don't be afraid to launch Kickstarter, but do your homework. And, you know, my first Kickstarter failed. I'm about to launch my second one in the end of April um, because I have the project I think I've been talking about before, my little my little um, fan art characters, which kind of got away from me because I never planned on doing a Kickstarter, never planned on doing a book, um, but it has become such a fun project and that I just can't deny it and I really want to have a book of these um, to sell it at shows and, and things like that so more on that and I'll be I will use the, I will um, be making videos about that as, as we get closer and as I start running that and I'll probably do a series on you know like how a dumb guy does a Kickstarter and will it be successful or something like that um, and just kind of bring you along to see you know all the stuff and I've I have been I have a Google Doc right now that I've been just tossing tons of ideas in I've been reading um, about other people's Kickstarters I've been looking at other Kickstarters and taking notes and I think that that was the big mistake that I made last time this goes into another tangent but I will just say that you've got to do projects okay um, do shows you know um, comic cons and fantasy cons and things like that um, because doing that is extremely entrepreneurial and I have some students right now that are killing it um, not they're not making a ton of money but the stuff that they're getting I, I mean I have students that I can almost guarantee you are going to be successful uh, one from last semester and one from this semester 
and a bunch of others, uh, some from semesters and semesters ago, um, some that are just killing it already. Um, and the one thing they have in common is most of them are doing comic cons as part of not the only thing. Cause again, people will say, Oh, so, th- so you're saying that, uh, just doing comic cons is the way to be set. No, it's all part of it. In fact, if you want to look at an artist and pattern yourself after a super mega successful artist pattern, pattern your life after my business partner, Jake Parker, does he do Kickstarters? Yes. Does he do comic cons? Yes. Does he do publishing work? Yes. Does he do, you know, plenty of freelance work? Yes. Is he writing his own stories? Yes. Um, and, and probably is he teaching? Yes. Um, has he launched projects that have failed? Dang it. I don't think so, but I hope I think I'm sure he does, but he's, he's just so super successful that it's almost sickening, but it's, it's all part of this thing. And the other thing that I wanted to say is that as you do all these things, you're going to start forming these networks and these chains and these connections. Um, and you get the, the, the longer you stay in it, the more of these connections that will start to happen. And these, uh, I mean, you call it networking, but I mean, think of it like a web, right? Think of it like, uh, you know, all some kind of crazy, uh, uh, strings that are all attaching. And it's kind of interesting because you get to a certain point where opportunities start to flow out of the woodworks. And so like for me right now, my, one of my biggest problems is figuring out which projects, which assignments, um, to say yes to, and which ones to say no to. And I say no to more than I say yes to just simply because there's too much, too much opportunity. I get opportunities from my Etsy site where people want me to illustrate a book or people want me to do a collaboration or they want me to, to, uh, help teach on their, the the one guy the other day is teaching a class on Etsy and wanted some, some help with that. And I, I didn't have time, but, um, it, the, the opportunities, I, the more you stay in this and the more people you meet and the more organized you are at writing down email addresses, keeping track of that in a database, something that I have to admit, I haven't been amazingly good at. Um, but you don't have to be good at everything, but that is one way I can tell you, I could spend time telling you about another artist who makes over $200,000 a year. And he and his wife are religious about their mailing list and about the contacts that they meet. And, and they keep a spreadsheet of all things. I mean, I see a spreadsheet and I want to vomit. These guys keep a spreadsheet with every time they meet somebody at a show, every time they meet somebody and have a conversation, the wife is busy writing down the, the conversation. And then when they put them in the database, they will give them uh, different letters and stuff. And they, so they can pull these people up in different ways, but they'll, when they do a painting, they'll say, Oh, so-and-so was interested in a waterfall painting, you know, cause I do that or was interested in this kind of a, uh, a landscape type of painting. And so they'll just type in the keyword landscape and up pops, you know, a couple hundred people that have said that they're interested in that kind of a painting. And then they'll just send out a short little email with a picture of the painting that they've done. And they'll usually almost always sell the original that way. And then they'll sell a bunch of prints through that, uh, as well as part of their, their business. This guy's also done children's books and, and things like that. Um, so you, you can't, you can't jump into being an illustrator overnight, being a, being a freelance illustrator, but you can start living the lifestyle of an artist right after school by like Jed Henry says, creating projects, being actively engaged and busy being an artist and having the lifestyle of the artist, the freelance work, that stuff will come down the road. If you're making great art and if you're living the life of an artist and making those connections and and being organized, eventually great things are going to happen, but you're going to have to slug it out. It's not going to be easy in the beginning. And that's what kills most people. That's why most people say, ah, you can't make it as a freelance illustrator, you know, and that's because they couldn't make it. That's because they, they didn't want it bad enough. They didn't want to go through the hard work in the beginning. I can tell you, it gets a lot easier. The more connections that you make, then things start just happening. You'll just wake up in the morning. There's an email, there's an opportunity. There's, do you want this job or not? Um, and I've had many experiences where I've had to turn down jobs because I didn't have the time to do them or didn't want to do them, didn't want to fit them in. And then they come back with more money and then I turn them down again and then they come back with more money. And then you finally you, you go, you know, 
and that was the pharmaceutical uh, book that I did in the, in the fall. I uh, turned it down twice, and it just kept coming back with more money. And so finally I said, okay, and I did it, and that you know, paid amazingly well. Um, so just know that uh, those are... Those are things that you got to do. There's there's tons of other things again that I can't put in this video that you'll find in our class or in Lee's class um, at SVS. And one of them is like how to uh, when you're dealing with a client, when you do have somebody that you're working with, even if they're there's somebody small, put them on your mailing list, but also mine them for contacts. That's something that so many people don't do in a convers casual conversation as you're working the project or as you're coming to the close go hey you know I'm trying to make it as an illustrator do you have any friends or or family members or clients you know if they're if they're an art director do you have any art director friends that might need uh, illustration work and then get those those names are gold the hardest thing to do is to get that mailing list again that's just something that we talk about generating in the in the class but the hardest thing to do is to generate that list and get it to a place where you can cost effectively mail a postcard every other month or every every once a quarter or something um, and have a reasonable expectation that you're going to get some return on that um, but that you know that's an excellent way to do it so in the end you know you're not going to be able to jump start your career overnight so you know take a deep breath just understand that you're an artist um, you're probably not going to be able to live off your freelance right away anyway um, but don't panic you know um, most people who have uh, thriving careers, like I said before, they never, they didn't jump in overnight. It took them a long time. Um, so anyway, I really hope this this helps. And um, if you know anybody that uh, is kind of going through this right now, send them this video, send them a link to this. And as always, do not subscribe unless you want to see more videos like this.